Topic five, choice of tax rate. Oftentimes in questions in accounting courses, the tax rate used in questions are static and straightforward. In reality, governments regularly make alterations to tax rates. Accounting standards such as IFRS stipulate that deferred income tax assets or liabilities be recognized at the rate that is expected to be in effect when the tax benefit is realized. Or in the case of a temporary difference, the rate in effect when that difference reverses. In most instances, tax rates for the future have not yet been enacted by a legislature or parliament and in this case, the current year rate that is encoded in law at the reporting date is used to measure the value of the tax position. However, if a tax rate for the future is enacted or substantially enacted, then the future benefit of a tax loss carry forward should be measured using this new rate for benefits expected to be realized while that rate is in effect. When we say substantially enacted, we mean there is little chance the tax rate won't be enacted. For example, if Parliament and the Senate have voted for a law changing tax rates and it is simply waiting for royal assent, it would be said to be substantially enacted. Let's look back at our example. Let's look at GBC Corp. They have an accumulated tax loss of 200,000 and it cannot be carried back. As the company has deemed it probable that it will be used, they have recognized an asset at the rate in effect of 25%. That is, they have a deferred income tax asset on their balance sheet for $50,000. However, JBC Corp becomes aware that Parliament has passed a new law enacting a tax rate for all future years of 20%. The asset must thus be written down to a value of 40,000. The entry for this change is as follows. Debit income tax expense, so refer reversing out 10,000 of that previous benefit or recovery. Um, and crediting the deferred income tax asset of 10,000. So this means that on the books for the current year, there'll be a deferred income tax asset of 40,000 and a deferred income or pardon me, and an income tax recovery of 40,000. This 10,000 is to reflect the economic reality that the tax rate went from 25% down to 20%. Interesting way of when a tax rate falls, how it can actually negatively impact the asset position of a company. Food for thought. Let's look at another question. Telephone Inc. has recorded a taxable loss for the year of $600,000. The company in consultation with its auditors has determined it is probable that the benefit of this tax loss will be realized and has used the in effect tax rate of 40% to record a deferred income tax asset in the amount of 240,000. However, shortly before the company is next required to report its results, the Canadian government enacted a new law increasing the tax rate to 45%. What is the amount of the income tax recovery recorded? Is it A, 270,000, B, 108,000, C, 30,000, or D, 40,000. If you said C, 30,000, that would be correct. So originally, what would have already been on the books would have been the 600,000 times the 40%. So in deferred income tax asset in corresponding recovery of 240,000. Then when the Canadian government enacted the, uh, the new tax rate at 45%, a new amount needed to be recovered. So this is already on the books. So when 
when it was determined that the new rate of 45% was substantially enacted, 45% times 600,000 equals 270,000 would be the amount of the future expected recovery. 270 minus what's already on the books of 240 means that there's an additional 30,000 in income tax recovery. So we would need an increase of 30,000 to income tax recovery, which is why C is the correct answer. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.